morning. Welcome to Cowboy Church this morning. Please join me in prayer. Lord, thank you so much for this day. Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity to come into your house today. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place today. Thank you, Lord, for every heart in here today. Lord, that we would just be receptive to hear every word that you have for each one of us, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we would submit our thoughts to you today. I pray we would submit our plans to you today, Lord, and that we would just honor you in our worship to you this morning. I pray that our praises reach your throne this morning. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Does anybody have any praises or prayer requests this morning? have a praise um i was fortunate enough my mom was fortunate enough to watch um my daughter sarah walk walk across the stage at a fsw uh graduation on friday and i couldn't be more proud of her and god gets all the glory and alex walked too so we're so proud of her but just we're happy so any other praises or prayer requests this morning the back. Um, I have a pra praise report. Um, my boyfriend's been allergic to sulfites for like six or ten years or something like that. Um, and his reactions got to the point where he would start going into anaphylaxis. If he got any amount of sulfites, it's like a preservative. Some foods are natural sources of it, like mushrooms. Um, and then over the years, it's kind of evolved into GI symptoms. Um, he came to visit from Alabama last weekend, and um, he received total healing from it after, um, after praying over him, and we were really declaring God's word over him. Um, I don't remember the exact wording of the verse, but basically God's waiting for us to say the word so that he can do what he's promised to do for us um, and what we have a right to through Jesus Christ. So just, he's all excited because now he can eat Arby's sandwiches. <laughs> but um, just, we're all thanking God for that, um, for that blessing on his life. Any other praises or prayer requests this morning? If you pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. Thank you for this opportunity. We get to come into your house, Lord, and hear your word. 
we get to share with each other, Lord Jesus. And um, I just pray for Pastor Frank. Just have the message move through him, Lord Jesus, so that it will touch us deep in our very hearts. I know that there are prayers out there that um, maybe people don't want to mention, Lord, but you know each and every one of our hearts out here, Lord Jesus. You know what we need and when we need it. Lord, may we be more in tune with you, Lord Jesus. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Do you want to get it? Yeah. Good morning. Is this thing on? Uh, we're going to try something a little different, and I'll be doing announcements. Uh, as y'all know, every second Sunday, uh, we'll be in both locations. We won't have the men and women's Bible study, but um, Tuesday, April 13th, don't forget, come out with James. Uh, it's a wonderful experience. And sorry I'm late and a little nervous. I ran the <laughs> whole way over here. Uh, <laughs> Come see us in men's Bible study. I think you'll really be touched and moved. We love you and thank y'all. Please stand this morning. Even when my eyes 
get excited and by the way CJ I'm nervous every time I come up here I'm shaking but I just go ahead and just do it scared <laughs> okay the gospel is the word of God it is the power the explosion of God now you think about that you've been given power in an explosion so you use that word the gospel is the good news of the power of the word of God. It's telling, telling of salvation. It tells of the deliverance and safety, preservation, healing, and soundness, remission of your sins, and a new birth. It is spirit. And we are the anointed ones. Christ, burden removing, yoke destroying, power of God lives in us. So on the second exchange, the first one was we traded our sins for his righteousness. It was a gift. Can't earn it? Take it. Receive it like a child. The second exchange is our curse for his blessings. Galatians 3, 13, 14. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who ha hangs on a tree. In order that in Christ Jesus, the blessings of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we would receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So faith, you must decide that his word is true. Faith is knowing confidence in his word that God's word is yes and amen. From the very beginning, God planned was for his people to live in blessings, in prosperity, in empowerment to prosper, to increase, to rise above, to multiply, to be very rich. That's extraordinary garden into which he settled the, fir the very first people was placed as abundance, joy, peace, and beauty. It is no accident that the first words we hear God speaking over them were words of blessings. God blessed them and God said to them, 
be fruitful. That was in Genesis 1, 28. Of course, we know that when Adam and Eve rebelled, they let loose of a horrific curse upon the earth in place of that blessing. Disease, lack, oppression, misery, strife, and pain suddenly reigned. Even the ground became cursed, refusing to yield provision gladly. For every one, the first couple's, couple's descendants, pain, hardship, and grief, grief became the hard reality of life. Yes, the first Adam released the curse upon the earth. And yes, the earth still groans under that weight of that curse and will continue to do so until a new heaven and earth comes along. But at that cross, the last Adam, Jesus, turned blessings loose in the place for, that, for those willing to humble and receive his offer. If you do not know Jesus and you do not humble yourself to know that he is greater than us and that he wants so much for you to be set free. He wants you to live in prosperity. He wants you to live prosperous. He wants you. Prosperous is not just money. I'm telling you it's prop. Think about what prosperity. If you, if your soul is prosperous, if, if your mind, your emotions, your words, your thinking and your will is prosperous. Oh my gosh, isn't that, isn't that a freedom? That's what Jesus came and shed his blood for us. For us to be prosperous, to live that freedom. Prosperous in so many things. Yes, in finances too. Finances too. In health, in, in decisions and wisdom. And he wants everything for you. The Apostle Paul had this truth in mind when he told the Christians in Rome, so just as the sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, now God's wonderful grace rules instead, giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life, in God's power, in his favor, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We have eternal life now in an in eternity, it never ends. Everything is there. The storehouses are full for each and every one of us. All you need to do is stand on that word and know that those storehouses are full and we are to be using those, taking from those storehouses. They're brand new every day, filled up. God knows what he's doing. Use his word and give all that God has for you. It is constant. He is a blessed God. This is the message of our key verse as well. At the cross, we get to exchange life under Adam's curse for Abraham's life of blessing. This is the second of the seven amazing exchanges to make when we accept God's gracious offer of salvation. So I'm telling you, we must stand on that salvation, that deliverance. What did I? It, it's deliverance. It's safety. It's so many things. What a privilege. This is our declaration. Father, what a privilege to exchange life under the curse of sin for a life of blessing under the rule of grace. Thank you that you have redeemed me for us, all of us, from the curse of the law, having become a curse for me, in order that in you the blessings of Abraham might come to us. I will not tolerate lingering remnants of the curse in my life or our household under the false belief that it is your will for me. I declare that I have been to the cross and exchanged Adam's curse for Abraham's blessing. Jesus is the only one that can get us there. He's the only one. But through Jesus, Satan is beat. Satan has been beaten and destroyed. Only through Jesus. So don't let him control your life. Stand on this blessing. Stand on the blessings God has for you. Stand on the truth. You have that authority to stand against him. Whatever you don't resist, we allow it to remain. So take a stand and use that word. I praise you, God, for your word. I praise you for your love. And I praise you for each and every person here. I thank you, Lord, for the worship that we're allowed to give you to thank you so much for you.
and your son and the blood of Jesus. I pray for each and every person here to be free, free indeed through you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for going to that cross and sitting at the right hand of the Lord God Almighty. In the name of Jesus, amen. Miss Nancy, our teacher for today for the uh, kindergarten to fifth grade is very sick, unable to be here, so we have no teacher, okay, unless you want me to teach. <laughs> we can do that, yeah. Miss Nancy said she'd combine if we could get somebody to help her. Miss Laura's going to go. Y'all want to go that way, that way, whichever way you want to go. That's up to y'all. Okay. Going this way, I think. Yeah. If you said it, we believe it. If you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man of your word. Believe it. Oh, oh, oh. If you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man of your word. All things are possible when we believe all chains are breakable when we receive the way you keep your promises if you said it we believe it if you said it if you said it we believe it If you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man of your word. If you said it, we believe it. If you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man of your word. We have this confidence. You'll finish what you started. God, you have never failed. You won't stop with me. You're patient in every step, patient in every heartache. God, you have never failed. You won't stop with me. If you said it, we believe it. If you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man of your word. If you said it, we believe it. Oh, 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 oh. If you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man of your word. If you said it, we believe it. If you said it, if you said it. If you said it, we believe it. If you said it, if you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man of your word. If you said it, we believe it. If you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man of your word.
Thank you, Ben. While the band's getting seated, I ask you, if you will, to join me in prayer for just a moment. Father in heaven, again, we uh, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity today to come together. We thank you, Lord, that we come to worship you. Lord, and I praise you for that. I praise you for everybody that's here, for everybody that's watching, Lord. Just thank you for them. Now, Father, as I come to ask you to do your work through me. Father, as I come now and I ask you to take over my mind and over my thoughts, over my tongue, over every word it would speak out of my mouth, will it be coming right straight from you. Father, as I surrender everything that I have and, and step out of the way of you and let you have your way with me. Father, I praise you and thank you that, that you have come to speak into our lives today. And I praise you that you've already pre prepared the hearts to receive the sponges are dry and ready. As the music came to them, they began to feel the soaking of you. Now your word will finish that up today. And we praise you for that, Lord. May it all be about you today. Lord Jesus, we ask this in your precious name. Amen. If you have your Bibles, uh, Mikhail will bring it up on the screen there. I'm going to ask you to go to John today. We're just going to camp out in John today, and um, I'm going to I'm going to paraphrase how this comes about. It was pretty neat how it how I found out how this all kind of fell into place, and I hope I can make it come and and be to a reality to you today. But realize and what, what I'm about to share with you is during the Feast of the Tabernacles. In other words, it's the Feast of the Harvest. And uh, right at the end of the harvest when everything's going good. And it, it lasted for seven days according to what I, I can find out. The, this, this feast lasted for seven days. And it was something that happened every day that the priests would do. And realizing that the reason that he'd done this is you got to go back to Exodus. Now, we're going to be in John, but now this goes all the way back to Exodus when Moses had brought the Israelites out. And as he brought them out, remembering, and, and we have to remember this because this is where we, I see they fell short and I believe we fall short as well. Have to remember who got Moses to go after the people. It wasn't Moses that chose to do it. It was God that chose Moses to go do it. Okay? That's the key that I want you to grab a hold of this. And I want you to continue to remember this as I, I share with you about this. And I encourage you, if you have the opportunity, to go and read Moses, I mean, read Exodus 17. One through uh, seven it is. Where it talks about the whole congregation of the children of Israel. Okay? So as you think about the whole congregation of the children of Israel, he's talking about the whole congregation of believers as you bring that out. Those are God's chosen people. Just that we are his chosen people because why? He's chose us and picked us out of. All right? So when you... And, and that's just a perfect representation of what it looks like to be carried, taken from the world and placed and put in his. So they were taken out of Egypt and brought out, okay? So he's bringing them out. And he's bringing them to the promised land. Remember when he brought them out, first thing he'd done is he had them to leave there with their hands full of stuff that their neighbors had gave them. All right? The neighbors had gave them um, all kind of articles that they would have for this journey. And then whenever they get to the Red Sea, whenever Pharaoh's on his way with all his chariots and all his warriors, and they're coming to take him down, take him down. 
and, 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 and God comes and has Moses to do something and God responds, okay? When Moses takes the staff and he sets it in toward the water, then God parts the water. He had the only way, now listen to me, the only way that the water got parted was because Moses chose to be obedient to God. God would have never parted the water if Moses would not have put his staff in there, okay? That's why you have to understand, that's why he calls us to be obedient. God cannot do what he needs to do until we become obedient to him, even when it does not make sense. Even whenever there's something after you like a whole army and you have no weapons whatsoever and they're coming to get you and you know when they get there, they are going to destroy you because they are upset and upset bad. Because why? Because the last thing that happened was all the firstborn boys were killed, okay? So, so remember, they are mad like, oh, get out. But what happens? The sea parts, they cross over not on wet ground, not on damp ground, but on dry ground. Over a million plus cross over. They get over, here comes the army after them. Because why? Because their minds were so, so, they never hesitated, they never done nothing. They were ready to go. And then all of a sudden, whoosh. The water covers them up, every one of them, horses, chariots, men, everything, Whew, gone. They look back and their enemies are destroyed. So they go on from there and, and they're going and now they've got out into the wilderness. It's supposed to be an 11 day journey for them to get from the, from, from the, 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 the sea to where they're headed, to the promised land. Well, at about that time, we get to the, where we're at now in Exodus, and, and they begin to grumble, and they begin to moan, and they begin to complain. Because why? Because they got thirsty. And not only were they thirsty, and not only did they just try everything they could, because here's, here's what happened. It's, they came to Moses now. They, they watched what God done with the plagues. They watched what God done by getting them across the Red Sea. They watched all these things that God done. But yet, when it come to just giving them water, they quit looking to God and began to blame Moses and said, Moses, why have you brought us out from where we were to kill us here through thirsting to death? Not only, not only us as the, as the parents, our children and our livestock are about to thirst to death. So you brought us out here to die. He said we'd have been better off, now this is what they said, we'd have been better off to stay where we're at was as slaves. And I promise you this, I, I'm going to be honest with you because people are doing it every single day. If, if Moses was to walk back right then to the Red Sea, put his staff back down, God would have parted the water again. Over 90% of them went right back to what they was in. Right back to the worldly way. Believers are doing it every day. Every day. So anyhow, I just want to keep you on there. God's just throwing these things at me as we go along. So, because um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't plan on going quite into this in depth, but I love going into in depth with stuff. Um, but anyhow, as, so, so here they begin to complain, okay? Because why? Because they had begun to put their, now they had start, they were no longer trusting God at all. They were trusting in man, now, I want you to move that for just a moment, and I want you to think about if that ain't where we're at today. Because what did we do, now, and, and, and listen to me now, what did we do for the last four years before this president got in here? What were we looking at? What were we trusting in? What were we putting our faith in? We were putting our faith in a man. We forgot about God. 
Then we get this new man in here, and he's doing everything he can to destroy everything that the other man did. And so now what are we doing? We're doing just exactly what the Israelites did, that we're complaining and, 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 and doing all this kind of mess and, and, and said, and, and, do you not care? And we have forgot about God. Because we're relying on the government. We're relying on them to get us through. And they're loving every minute of it. The government's loving every minute of it. They're loving sending out those checks. They're loving to, to watch people stay home. And you got this sign, that sign, every sign. Every place you go by today, what does it say in there? Hiring, 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 looking for help. Look on the back of a van. Look on the back. We're hiring, we're hiring, we're hiring, we're hiring, we're hiring. Nobody going to go to work. But why? Because the government going to keep paying you. Why do you want to go to work? So we decided now that, that we're no longer going to because again you're going to see the rook, the cups re, re, I can't even say the word thank you ma'am whoever said that repercussion did I say it right? I get it right I may have to have a little teaching here repercussion repercussion we're going to see that now you just listen please we're going to see that because there's no physical way that you can do what's being done today and there not be something come out of that. I mean, I understand when the Bible even tells us, I don't know how we got on this. The Bible even tells us about that whenever, whenever evil is in the midst of leadership, the people groan. So anyhow, as we think about that and we realize that, so here's what God did. But he had to wait on Moses now. So Moses comes to God and said, God, because again, they come at him to stone him. Now they would, they had done, I want you to see now how quick we are. How quick we are. I mean, they watched all these miracles happen. Things we can't even begin to fathom experienced them now, not, not heard about them, experienced them, but yet when they got to this place right here, they were ready to stone Moses to death. What the Bible says. Because why? Because he was not supplying what they wanted. So Moses cries out to God and said, God, can you believe these people? That's what he said. He said, I can't believe these people. And Moses tells him, he said, now take that staff that you got. And I want you to go to that rock. And I want you to take your staff and I want you to hit the rock. Doesn't make sense. God, God asks us to do things that don't make sense. He said, okay. Moses does that. Moses Taps the rock, and the water comes gushing out of the rock. The people are drinking the water. Now let's bring it to where we're at today with, with John. Because I had to share that with you, because here's the reason why the priests done what they did this is how powerful this message was to those folks that watched water gush out of a rock where there was no water around. Every day the priests would bring water from the pool of Salaam and a gold um, deal, gold pot. And they bring it in there to, to pour out as an offering. And they'd done it to remember what God had done for them in the wilderness whenever he had Moses tap the rock and the, God brought the water out. That's how powerful that was to them. They used that. 
And I wanted to bring you there to where you can see now where Jesus comes into the midst of this and you go from the, the old covenant to the new covenant. Okay? So now, join me now as we go to John. I didn't mean to go that deep into that and all that, but hopefully you enjoyed that. So now, in John 7 and verse 37, it says this. On the last day now, get, remember that, on the last day, that great day of the feast. Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. I want to carry you back now just a few pages back before I go any deeper into this to kind of help tie this together. Back to John 4. A very familiar passage. We had talked about it not long ago. I just picked out a few scriptures out of here that I believe the Lord wants us to hear. So in John 4 verse 10, Jesus answers and said to her, and remember this is, and just kind of help you a little bit, this is the, the Samaritan woman who meets Jesus at the well. So he says, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Verse 13, Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will, will become in him a fountain of water. Springing up into everlasting life. And then verses 23 and 24. It said, but the hour is coming. And now he is. When the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Amen. That's the only way to worship God now is in spirit and truth. All right, so now I want to carry you back to kind of help you bring this together and break you understand. All right, so understand Jesus knew that they had brought this water. This was something that they had done over and over and over and over again for year after year after year after year after year. And I'm not even sure. I, w I wanted to look it up, but I didn't have time to tell you how long it had been since Moses hit the rock to the time Jesus is talking here. But I'm talking about several thousand years, okay? I'm not talking about about 10 years. I'm not talking about a few hundred years. I'm talking about, about over several thousand years, all right? From the time he hit the rock, the water came, and they're still celebrating it, and they may still celebrate it today with some of the Jews. So realizing that. So when you go back and you look at this and you, and you see what Jesus shares here. And then understanding now, they had done it six days. And I love this because understand six represents man. All right? Six represents man and man is not quite where you need to be. All right? Because why? Because if you were where you need to be, you wouldn't need God. You see what I'm saying? So six just represents man. So that's the best they could do. But Jesus comes in on the very seventh day, what? And he calls it a great day. It's the, it's the perfect day, the complete day. He's completing the week out. He's completing what he's sharing. He said to let you know that the old covenant that you used to live under, the one you always want to live under, I'm about to do away with that. And I'm fixing to show you something new.
I'm fixing to give you something now that, that, that you don't have to come back for day after day and year after year and year after year. Once you receive it, guess what? He said you will have everlasting life. It will bring life into you. It will bring, it is living. See, the water that they brought out of the pool of Salaam and realized that this pool was very valuable because this is the same pool of Salaam that Jesus spit he, he picked up this blind boy, had come to him, had been blind from birth. He picks up the dust, dirt out of the thing, spits in his hand, rubs the dirt together, places that on the boy's ha- eyes, over his eyes, and then tells him to go to the pool of Shalom and wash and you shall see. And the young boy goes to the pool of Shalom and does exactly what Jesus says and comes back, see. Amen. Again, it's about being obedient, all right? It's all about being obedient and and wanting to to do that. You've got to do what, when Jesus says it, when he tells you, when you read it in his word and he convicts you of it, that's just the Holy Spirit telling you, if you want to see this manifest, there's something you've got to do. So again, as we look at that and we go back to that and we see that where he talks about now, now here we are at that, and, and he says, and, and he cries out. And I, I, I would love to have seen what that was like when Jesus just cried out. Because I had to believe it was something that just literally run up and down your spine whenever he, he said these kind of words. Because why? Because exactly where I truly believe that, that, that sometimes we have to have, have and, it, and, and believe me, it ain't all about feelings because feelings will send you down a road that you don't want to go down. Feelings will carry you in places you don't want to be. Feelings will make you do things you never would want to do. So get rid of your feelings. But I truly believe at that time when Jesus cried out, there was not a soul there that did not hear him. And it'll be the very same thing when the trumpet sounds again and you say, I don't see how it's going to be. I don't know either. But I know this. Jesus says when the tr- last trumpet sound, when the trumpet sounds, everybody will hear the trumpet sound. Amen? If his word says it, then it's going to happen. So I don't know how it's going to happen. Don't have no idea. I just know. I know this. I, I, let, there be an, let there be something happen with a child. And I love that they do that because that's, I automatically look at my phone because I want to begin to pray for that child. Because when I hear that, go off on your phone. You ever been around folks and all of a sudden that Amber Alert goes? Everybody around you, you'll start hearing, it goes off everywhere. You automatically know something's wrong. Something's going on. It makes me look at my phone so I can, and, and 99% of the time, it's, it's uh, somebody's been kidnapped. So it gives me an opportunity to pray for that family or pray for that situation and pray the law cuts them off before they get going with them. So when we see that can come through your phone, I can, uh, you got to realize and understand whenever Jesus plays that trumpet, it's going to be praying. When his angels play that trumpet, you ain't got to worry about whether you're going to hear it or not. You'll hear it whether you want to hear it or not. That's the whole deal. That'll be a sound that some of us will be, be or been looking to hear, and then some of us are dreading we'll ever hear it. That's the last thing we want to hear is that trumpet sound. So anyhow, he cries out. And he says, let him who come to me and drink. And he wants you to understand this. And I, and I, I love this as you look at this and, and, and open this up just a little bit deeper. It says, to drink living water is the metaphor for experiencing the vitality of God's spirit. Okay? Or if you need it broke down like I do, and you probably don't, but I had to have it broke down. It is experiencing the life of God's Spirit. Amen? So that's what it looks like whenever you've received this drink that Jesus has for you. It's about to give you some life of God. It, the only way you can experience the life of God is through His Spirit. Okay? That's it. You will not experience it any other way. You can try to, but you will not. But when you get this spirit in you, when you take this drink, when you receive this drink, guess what? God's life comes to life in you. Amen? And it will change you. It will do things in you. It'll make you not do what you used to do and make you do things you never thought you ever would do. Amen? Because why? Because it's all about life. So he says there, 
Then he goes on and says, whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Again, he backs it up with the scripture because you remember what the enemy will try to do. The enemy will try to come and twist it. Why? Because he's trying to tell you that what you got ain't, ain't no good. Jesus said, remember, it is written. He told Satan over and over and over again, it is written. It is written. He's telling us right here in a very polite way. It's in the scripture. You got to understand when you receive this, when you, but you got to believe in me. That's the only reason why you want to have that. There would be no other reason why, except if you wanted to try to, try to benefit from it in, in some other kind of a way. But, but the reason that you want this is because you first believe in me. So he goes on to say that, so, so that you may have what? So not only, he says, I am the living water, and guess what it will do in you? It will flow out of you and flow out rivers of living water. Every time you share something with somebody, every time you give somebody a smile, every time you shake somebody's hand, every time you smile at somebody, every time you give a kind word, that is rivers of living water flowing out of you. Amen? When you do things out of the ordinary, like CJ did this morning, See, I sent that out to him to pray for him and ask him to pray about that. And, and um, I said, you know, maybe you can recruit somebody. And, and God wouldn't, wouldn't let him recruit. <laughs> Made him do it. It wasn't because he wanted to do it. But he just knew that God is asking him to do it. That's another part of that river. So take the band up here. That ain't what they normally do. You know, they don't go, they, they don't travel throughout the week singing all week long at concerts, okay? Even though they could because they're that good. But realizing this, they go to their places where they work and where their establish is, and, and guess what they do? They pour out what God's put in them, that river of water. It may be a, they may be walking along and not even realizing and singing a song, and a word comes out of their mouth at a certain time that that person needed to hear at that very moment that brought life into them. Amen. And it's no different than you and I when we're out in our workplaces and we're going here and there and going that and doing this and doing that. And, we st and, and, and we're on the, on the place and we come up to a stop sign or we come up to a place and, and there's somebody trying to come out and, and we're in a hurry. But yet we stop for a moment and let that person out. You may have helped their life. What, what do they do? They, they throw their hand up and, and wave. That is what I'm talking about, about the living water that flows out of you. Because why? Because that's life. So understand that. So, so Jesus wants us to have that. He says this, but you got to come thirsty. You go to the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, and he says, Blessed are those who are thirsty for righteousness. Thirsty for the Spirit. Thirsty for that. i got to hurry. Okay, now. Let me, let me go back over here to, to, to John 4 because I'm going to close this down right now. It done went further than I, I, I wasn't expecting to go quite this long. So, so as, I, as we get a gear, and you remember what, she, what Jesus said to her, all right, give me a drink. But I want you to go now down to verse 23 and 24. And Ben, I'm going to ask you to actually come on now. As I, I'm reading this right here. Because I truly believe that this is, this, is, this is where we have to come to. I want to ask you today about that. I want to ask you about, about that part. As we begin to go in, are, are you having trouble? Are you having trouble worshiping God? Are you having trouble coming to that place where you just don't, it don't seem like he's listening, don't seem like he's doing anything, don't seem like he's working, don't seem like nothing's going on, don't seem like you're walking, talking to a brick wall, it don't seem like that. Could it possibly be? That you have chose not to, not to accept this living water that Jesus talks about. That you're still wanting to live under the old and not come into the new. Because remember, the old covenant is you got to take the water, you got to drink, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to be this, you got to do that, you got to do this, and don't, don't do that, and don't do this, and don't do that. 
All about rituals. But when Jesus came into the picture, he changed all that. He took what they did in six days and he said, let me share with you something. If you'll just do this right here, on this time, and, and you receive this, you won't have to worry about coming back for another drink and another drink and another drink and another drink. But you got to be willing to, first of all, be thirsty. So if you're not thirsty for God, then he can't give it to you. Because it's just like you, just like going to the fountain now. And, and I want you to think about this. You go to the fountain nowadays and it's amazing. Uh, I, I've noticed that when I go into certain places, especially I go to Five Guys. You know, I, I, I go there from time to time. And you go to this fountain machine and this thing's got this big screen on it. And you got to sit there for a moment and decide what you want. Then you hit that and then you go from there and then you decide in that process, what do you want out of that process? Okay? But here's what I want to share with you. You can put that cup underneath there. And if you put the lid on it first before you let it fill up, guess what? You ain't going to get nothing in that cup. You ain't going to get no ice. You ain't going to get no water. You ain't going to get nothing. But the moment that you take that lid off and the moment you hit the button and you watch it pour into it, you start to receive. Some of you are here today that I truly believe that you've capped something over the cup of God's Spirit and you said, I, I, don't, I don't need that. And what I want to share with you is I just ask you if you'll just please try taking the cup off. Because the only way to get satisfied, the only way to worship God is in spirit and truth. And guess what the Holy Spirit is? Spirit of truth. Amen? So in order to be able to worship God, you must come and worship Him in spirit. That's why you have to receive the Holy Spirit. And that's what he's asking. He wants you to understand it's living water. And when that water comes into you, life comes into you. Life begins to work up in you. Life begins to drive out. He didn't say now, and, and you, I want you to realize this. And that's what I want you to understand about Jesus. And this is what I like about Jesus compared to any kind of other. Jesus never stood up and said, now listen to me. As, as soon as you quit doing this ritual, as soon as you stop acting that way, as soon as you stop talking that way, as soon as you stop putting on what you're putting on or doing what you're doing, then you can come. No, he first said and cried out, if you're thirsty, if you're thirsty, come and drink. That's what he said. That's what I love about Jesus. It ain't about getting things right because you'll never get things right because the enemy will make sure of that. He just says, come like you are. So I want to ask you today, if you'll just come like you are. Because Jesus says, the hour is coming and now is. When the true worshipers, are you a true worshiper or not, will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. Jesus says that. The Father is seeking such to worship Him. Will you come today as you stand right now? And I ask you to come because you want to receive that living water that Jesus has. For somehow or another, the, the sponge that you have, the cup that you have, whatever it may be, is you've been guarding it from that. But you didn't realize that to receive that receive means to receive everlasting life. That's what he told the girl at the well. And he said, it will bring you everlasting life it's living and then it begins to spring up inside of you and I promise you 
when that living water comes in, when that living power moves in, it will break every demonic force that's around. Because understand this, the Holy Spirit and, there's, and the spirit of error cannot be together. It'll drive the spirit of error out if you'll allow yourself to be filled with it. Is, is the Father seeking you today? Is He seeking you in such a way to worship Him? That's why it goes on and says, God is spirit. And those who worship Him must, must worship in spirit and truth. If that's you here today, come on. And all you're coming to do is receive that living water, that Holy Spirit is powerful, powerful enough that raised Jesus from the dead. That's the same spirit he's talking about right here. Will you come? one of those that are hoping God will part the Red Sea back again so you can go back to the world. See yourself on the other side of the Jordan getting ready to go into the promised land and, and not standing there gazing but getting ready to walk. But it'll take the power of the Holy Spirit to get you to, to see that. forgiveness is like holy water that's what he's talking about if you're having problems receiving forgiveness it's because you've not received the living water it's the living water that allows you to receive the forgiveness that you need to receive about that you need to know about being born again you need to know about that come on take me under I think there's somebody here that's walking on the fence. Just walking the fence, trying to decide. Make the day be the day you decide. You get off the fence and get in with Jesus.
That's the only thing that'll ever make you want to change is God's living water, His grace poured out on you. The only thing that ever really makes me want to change. Oh, oh, I don't want to abuse your so grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. Your forgiveness is like sweet. You continue to amaze us with your wonders and your glory. You continue to amaze us with your power and your majesty. You continue to amaze us with your love. We praise you, Lord God. You're a God of second chances. You're a God of hope. You're a God who watches over us. You're a God who is able. You are thus says the Lord God. You are the Lord of hosts. You are the God, our banner. You're our provider. You're the God who heals. And we praise you for that, Lord God. We praise you that you can take a rock and bring water out of it. One simple act of obedience can bring the greatest miracles. Help us, Lord God. As we go this week to listen to you when you ask us to do one simple act of obedience because you want a great miracle to take place. May we remember we're your vessels, you use us. May we not forget that. We love you, Lord. We thank you. I thank you, Lord, for the protection that you put around each and every one of us. I thank you, Lord, that you help us right where we're at. Father, I thank you that you're there with each person here in each situation that they're at. Your word says you'll never leave them or forsake them. No matter how they may feel, may they know that that's the gospel. They can stand on it. Just as you cried out to the Father, you tell us we too can cry out to the Father. I know some of you need to cry out to the Father. And I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to cry out to the Father. And then wait to listen to what he has to say. Please don't cry out and move in a hurry. Cry out and be, be still for a moment. And listen for that voice. That still small voice that he wants to share with you. Because he loves you. You're chosen. He chose you. He wants you to prosper. He wants to show you the great plans that he has for you. Will you join with him? And stop fighting against him. Father, I thank you for being so kind. And I thank you, Lord, there is a day coming when that trumpet's going to sound. And there's a day coming when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. There's a day coming. And we praise you for that. 
So, Lord Jesus, we ask you now just to go with us, to help us. Help us, Lord God. I, I, I pray for this. Help us, Lord God, that we would do at least one act of random kindness this week. Just one act of random kindness this week. And Lord Jesus, we ask it in your powerful name. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you.